All right, I call the order of the City Council meeting for June 28th, 2023. It's 5.30, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilwoman Campbell? Councilman Leon? Here. Councilwoman McDarrow? Here. Councilwoman Julian? Here. Councilman Stevens? Here. Vice Mayor Wilson? Here. Mayor Harris? I'm present. You have a quorum. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Um, Councilwoman Campbell will not be present at this evening's meeting. She requested if the council can excuse her absence. All right, I need a motion to excuse the councilwoman. Motion. motion. Been moved and seconded, show excused. Please stand for the invocation and pledge of allegiance. God, our Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy towards us. God, and it's in this moment that we pray. It's in this moment, God, that we pray for your knowledge, your wisdom, and your understanding as we prepare to discuss business that affect your people. God, we pray now that you allow your many blessings to be uh, bestowed upon this great city that we call Miami Gardens, its residents, stakeholders, everyone that has something to do with this city. God, if you do those things for us, we promise to give your name all the precious honor and glory that it deserves. It is in your son's name I do pray. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we're on approval of minutes. Are there any minutes that need to be approved? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm gonna go ahead and withdraw the minutes from the agenda. All right, Sean, withdrawing. We're on order of business. Are there any items that need to be pulled, added, or placed on the consent agenda, or any other place on the agenda? Uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes. I would like to add a discussion item regarding uh, the marketing of special events. Okay, we'll put that under Um, customarily, we put that discussion items under 12. Okay. And then I would also like to take 6 1 off and add another presentation. All right, we'll, we'll show 6 1 substituted as special presentation by Mayor Rodney Harris. Yes. And Mr. Mayor, I would like to pull item 10.1. 10 1? Uh huh. Um, excuse Excuse me, 10.1 is not on the consent agenda. It's a it's public, a public hearing. hearing, so oh, would so it be sorry. on for discussion? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, any other items that need to be added or deleted? Showing none, I need a motion on the agenda. Motion. motion. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Show the agenda passed. All right, so we're on special presentations. Item 6.1, special presentation by Mayor Rodney Harris. All right, all of us on the dais have indicated at one point or another that the Oasis at Miami Gardens is the place to go to receive effective small business incubator services. I myself have been invited to the Oasis on many occasions and heard from its members of the effectiveness of the Oasis services and support. Today is not just about highlighting an effective or useful bit small business service in the city. It's about the number of small business owners and entrepreneurs uh, who will benefit from this investment and get the services and support they need to grow their businesses. So today I would like my council to join me in providing an oasis with a check to help continue the incubator service for our small businesses in the city of Miami Gardens. So, Mr. Felton, are you present? Could you please come to the podium? Before we, before we present the check, I just wanted to say thank you for your commitment to the small businesses here in the city of Miami Gardens. And as you know, you and I have been sitting down for years trying to figure out 
how we can get this incubator service up and running and you have done just that. And I understand that you have some small business owners from the city of Miami Gardens present. You guys, could you please stand? And this, was what, this is what the Oasis was all about, getting small businesses started, helping them to be able to do business with the city, helping them to do business throughout the communities. And we wanted to make sure that we provided the Oasis with the support that we said we were going to do. So, Kevin, you want to bring that? And if you, my council don't mind, if you guys would come down and take a picture with us as well. The small business owners, you guys could come over and take a picture with us. <laughs> she got to go through the protocol. The protocol, pardon it. Testing one, two, three. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, City Council, staff, and residents of the City of Miami Gardens. First of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you for believing in the city, and thank you for believing in the mission that we are encompassing on in terms of empowering the small businesses. The Oasis of Miami Gardens is a catalyst tool for economic development, which fosters an environment of entrepreneurship and serves as a gateway for early stage entrepreneurs to create development and scale businesses to the underserved market. 
being a small business for the past 20 years, I truly understand what it takes to start a business. And it's tough. You need support, you need financial support, you need guidance, and you need someone to hold your hand. And so being able to, uh, having gone through that and understand what it takes to get an SBA loan, mm -hmm. what it takes to be able to get bank financing, I realized that, you know what, it's incumbent upon me not just to be able to receive this, but to be able to lift as I climb and teach other businesses to say, hey, this is something that you don't have to go through. So that's why the Oasis at Miami Gardens was birthed in 2019 to create an environment where businesses will be able to come and get those certifications so they can be able to tap into the resources that come available. Because many of the times we have resources that come in our community such as PPP and other, other funding sources, but the challenge becomes we don't have the necessary things in place to be able to benefit from those resources. So having an Oasis, it provides businesses a place that they can go and grow. They can go and put the things in place where they can actually have their, 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 their the infrastructure in place to, you know, as far as the business structure, business formation, uh, in terms of certification, in terms of licensure, in terms of designations. That's the reason the, ex I mean, the Oasis is here. And so every month we've committed consistently We've been committed since 2019 to host events because we believe in this city and we believe in what the potential is in this city. And so every month we have our first Friday business breakfasts. And I'm proud to announce we were just awarded by Google, the Grow with Google certification, where now we will be able to provide designation through technology, where businesses will be able to come and get the digital support that they need to not only grow their business, but to be able to put it on the map as it relates to uh, you know, digitizing websites and the, all of the support that they would need from Google. So I'm proud to announce that. We're going to be hosting that at our next First Friday Business Breakfast. But Mayor, I don't want to belabor the time. Thank you and the council and the city for believing in Oasis. And I promise you, the best is yet to come. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We're on 6.2. Item 6.2, report by Miami Gardens Commission for Women, empower women for living and learn, for living and leaving a powerful legacy. And this is sponsored by Vice Mayor, Vice Mayor Katrina Wilson. I would like to ask, first of all, all of the members of the Women's Commission to please stand. And um, let me just take a moment to say thank you, thank you, thank you for all, not some, but for all of your hard work and your dedication in bringing this, um, this report to our, our council. I know that the chair, I thought I saw her come in. Did she step out? Okay, all righty. So, um, you want to let her do a brief report? Mm -hmm. You want to let her do a two-minute report? Yeah, yeah. She's gonna, yeah, she's gonna do a, a two-minute report, um, but she still had to step out for a moment, so oh. she'll be right back. So can we take a station break? Okay. I, I don't know if we can take a two-minute. I hope that's her right there. There she is. Great. Perfect. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> station. Now we're coming back to regular. Good evening. Mr. Mayor, Good evening. Madam Vice Mayor, and to the Council. I'm Carol Lawrence, the Chair of Miami Gardens Commission for Women. Since I know I only have two minutes and I plan for five, let me make this quick. Before you, you have the Commission for Women report, and as long as I've been on the Commission, I believe this is probably the first report that has ever been done. This is a study of women for the, from our city. The um, the purpose for the study was to identify what the women in the city wanted, whether it's perceived or reality. And we have done that. There were six categories. If you actually take a look at your, you take a look at your, um, your, 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 your report, we studied health and wellness, safety, family relations, um, financial empowerment, feminism, and community. And they had a lot to say. And so having said that, we heard them, we see them, they need us. It was an intergenerational study from youth with the ages identified to adolescents, to young adults, 
to adults as well as our geriatric and our, or our senior population. So we were really excited. The study um, occurred on July the 29th of this year. And so we are <coughs> glad to stand before you and provide the results. Um, we do have ask. We want the commission to support us. Um, we represent each of you. Want to thank you for making your appointments. It's probably the first time that we've had a full commission and we're excited. So thank you very much. Um, I want to make sure we recognize our vice chair. Her name is Renee Rivers. This is our vice chair and our commission. So again, we want to thank you. The results are here. This is a public document and it is available to anybody who cares to have a copy of it. And so again, I will bid farewell and thank you. If you have any questions you would like to follow this report, please join us at our next meeting, which is July the 18th at 6 p.m. Thank you. <laughs> on point. Perfect. Right on Perfect. point. Uh -huh. And they are on point with everything. All right. We're on public comments. Mr. Clerk, do you have any written communication? No, there are no written communication, Mayor. All right, I have one public comment card. Ms. Sonia Frazier Stevens. Sharon, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't have my glasses on, and I was looking at Miss Sonia Flowers. <laughs> <laughs> and I agree with you on that. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Honorable Council, um, City Clerk, City Manager, City Attorney, and I thank y'all for doing what y'all did for the Women's Commission. I thank y'all for doing the $100,000 check for Mr. Felton, who's helping them small businesses, because that's what we need. I get up here to speak about the senior citizens. It is a homeless crisis in a lot of our seniors, from Miami Gardens to Old Town, especially in the Brownsville, Brown Sub, Libby City area, and the Miami Gardens. My heart hurts because I know one of our state representative, James Bush III, a junior, he passed that senior protection bill. He, he sponsored it, but last year it didn't pass. The year he was there, it didn't pass. Now we're seeing more and ever of senior citizens getting put out their own little home. My husband is Jamaican, you know what he told me? I come to America because I want that white picket fence. I want to live the American dream. Our seniors want to live the American dream, so I'm asking the Women Commission, that is another plight that you guys, especially <sighs> black women, our senior black women, they're suffering. They need help. And I thank y'all so much for doing what y'all do. And it was wonderful seeing you in Tallahassee. You're my best friend now. I'm gonna put it on the record. <laughs> See you. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any other public comments? Showing no more public comments, show public comments close. Well, ordinance of first reading, there are none. Second reading, there are none. One resolutions. Resolution of public hearing, item 10.1. A, resolu a resolution of the City Council of the City of Miami Gardens, Florida, authorize the city manager to add a fourth route to improve the wait time for the trolley service in accordance with the revised trolley route map. Providing for adoption of representation, providing for an effective date, and this is sponsored by the city manager, and this is a public hearing. All right. Public hearing on this item is open. Okay. Um, I apologize. Pub Excuse oh, me. I got you. Public hearing on this item is open. Public hearing is closed. Mr. Manager. Mr. Mayor, I'll yield to Councilwoman Julie. I know she had a question regarding Councilwoman, that. I was coming to you. Yeah, I'm so sorry. My, my uh, iPad is out of whack right now, so it just kind of copy got me out of whack a little bit. But um, I just wanted to say that I think this is a great item, Mr. Manager. And when we talk about improving the quality of life for residents, this is what it looks like. So adding an additional route for the trolley for people who may not have access to transportation or people who just cannot afford the high gas prices, I think this is a win-win for our community. So kudos and thank you for this. I thank you, Councilwoman Julian. Mr. Mayor, I don't have a formal presentation. As you are aware, this item has to be uh, noted in the public as, as a public hearing. Correct. So that the item can move forward. Right. Uh, this is a requirement from the county. All 
All right, I need a motion on this item. Motion. Second. Been moved and seconded. Mr. Clerk, call the roll. Councilman Leon? Yes. Councilwoman Godaro? Yes. Vice Mayor Wilson? Yes. Councilwoman Julian? Yes. Councilman Stevens? Yes. Mayor Harris? I vote yes. Motion passes, 6-0. Now we're on to the consent agenda. Item 11.1. A resolution of the City Council of City of Miami Gardens, Florida, authorizing the vacation and abandonment of the water tank easement located at Scott Park, folio number 34-2111-007-1250, providing for adoption of the team, providing for an effective date. This is sponsored by the City Manager. Item 11.2. A resolution of the City Council of City of Miami Gardens, Florida, authorizes the City Manager to issue purchase order for an amount not to exceed a total amount of $234,416.00. And 12 cents for a one year to shy international court for Microsoft Microsoft software licensing and services for the city of Miami Gardens authorizing waiver of competition of bidding pursuant to section um, 2-757 of the procurement code providing for a doctor of state providing for an effective date and this is sponsored by the city manager at 11.3 a resolution of the city council city of Miami Gardens Florida Authorize the city manager and city clerk to execute and test respectively that certain off-system construction and maintenance agreement with the Florida Department of Transportation for work in the city of city's right-of-way as part of the Northwest 183rd Street Improvement Project, FM number 447800-1-52-01. Providing for instructions to the city clerk, providing for adoption of representation, providing for an effective date, and this is sponsored by the city manager. Item 11.4, resolution of the city council, city of Miami Gardens, Florida, awarding request for proposal RFP number 22-23-016 Brentwood Park Improvements to Bajar Construction Inc. Authorized city manager to negotiate and execute an agreement for this purpose, provided for adoption of state, provided for an effective date, and this is sponsored by the city manager. Item 11.5, resolution of the city council, city of Miami Gardens, Florida, awarding invitation to bid ITB number 21-22-020, city of Miami Gardens Municipal Complex Irrigation Con Conversion Retrofit to the Irrigation Guy LLC, authorizing the city manager to issue purchase orders in an amount not to exceed the budgeted amount provided for adoption of state provided for effective date, and this is sponsored by the city manager. Item 11.6, a resolution of the city council of city of Miami Gardens, Florida, recognizing AFSCME Florida Council 79 of the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, AFL-CIO, ask AFSCME in paren as a sole and exclusive bargaining agent to represent a group of general non-management employees in a proposed unit comprising of the following job classification as described and recognition and acknowledgement petition filed with the Florida Public Employee <coughs> Relations Commission, perk and paren, attached hereto and made as part thereof as Exhibit A, provided for adoption representing providing for an effective date and is sponsored by the city manager and now is their consent agenda. Need a motion on the consent agenda? Motion. 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 Been moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Showing none, show the consent agenda pass. All right, we're now on to item 12, resolutions and discussion. Item 12.1, discussion on special event marketing. Mr. Stevens? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, last year, I believe it's been a year, um, I sponsored a resolution to launch the uh, Miami Gardens uh, marketing campaign. Uh, to help us to tell our story, essentially uh, what we're doing and the resources that we have here in the city of Miami Gardens. Based off that resolution, uh, our city manager's office con uh, contracted the Mosaic Group that worked tireless uh, with our staff to create essentially a brand uh, for the city and the face of the city, and, and out of that birthed the Miami Gardens, it's where you want to be concept. Um, there's a few things that I want to add um, as we talk about the securing of our brand and what we look like as a city um, that I want to address and, 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 and add to essentially our protocol on how we do things. The first thing is I want to make a, a motion indicating that any non-budgeted special events must come back before the council for an approval. If it's going to require the usage of the city seal uh, uh, or any of the city platforms to display the events. Uh, for an example, at budget season, we uh, lay out what is considered our signature events. Jazz and Gardens, STEM Festival, uh, Juneteenth, et cetera. Those events are passed through at budget time. 
throughout the year, there's a series of additional events that is either created by the council or even individual departments um, that never comes back before the council. So there's events that's happening that members of this diocese is not aware of because it's never come back before us. So I'm making a motion that any non-budgeted events has to come back before council if we're going to use the city seal or if it requires the usage of the city seal or any of the city uh, platforms to be promoted on. And that include financing? Uh, correct. That should finance, Ms. Mayor, you, what do you mean by financing? I'm, when you do an event on your own. I, I, that's fine. Uh, if you secure the funds to execute an event, and, and I'm, I'm sure you're referencing for us as council members, um, but I'm addressing this holistically, not just council members, but any events that was not budgeted for and approved at budget season, uh, if it's going to require the usage of the city seal and, or, uh, and uh, promote it on a city platform, it needs to come back before council by way of a resolution. So you, you've made a motion for that? Yes. Those are the two amendments that I would like to make to the protocol, that the seal and the promotion. If you're going to use the city seal and if it's going to uh, be promoted on the city platform, that event needs to come back to the council by way of a resolution. So, Mr. Clerk, would that be added to the already existing item that he... Um, what, what we can do if the council does, we have a motion on the table right now. Yeah. Um, if it does, if this motion does get approved, we can come back with a resolution at the next meeting to formally codify within the protocol manual. No, it don't need to. Or no. we don't. Or we could just be action directed by council based on the approval. This is actually set in policy of the council. So moving forward in the minutes, that'll be noted as it, and then we'll put it in the protocol manual as approval during this meeting by motion, and we'll put the vote in the protocol manual. All right. I'm, I'm any, any questions or concerns from the Excuse me, yeah, Mr. Yeah, Mayor. I, I, I'm sorry. Because we have a motion on, can we get the motion? Because sometimes we're going to lose track of the motion. I need second. a motion moved in. It's Thank been you. moved and seconded. Now it's open for discussion. Thank you. You know, um, you know, I've had this problem, and I, I'm not all necessarily comfortable discussing it, but I'm going to go ahead. Um, I have seen things come across, and we have former council members using their titles as though they're still in the seat. And I'm saying, I'm saying it, it doesn't say like former uh, councilman or former councilwoman. And unfortunately, many of our residents don't know that they're former. You know, they, they don't know. And so I'm not, I'm not opposed to anyone partnering with anyone. But I do believe that um, if, the, if you're former, that it ought to precede being listed as former council person. It should not be listed as council person. It should not be listed as vice mayor because you don't occupy those seats anymore. And so it, when it appears, it appears as if, especially when it's on city um, material, it appears as if that person is still or was recently elected or still holds the seat. And that's not, that's not, that's not the case. And so, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I don't mean this in, to offend anyone, I just am saying that I've had residents to bring this to my attention about, um, about you know, the, the way the representation is on city materials and they, they go, well, is that person still in office? Well, no, so, but I get Facebook stuff from them and it says, you know, council person or vice person or whatever the case may be. And if your position, if you no longer hold the position or the, the office, then you ought to precede it by stating that it is former. And if you're going to be on anything that is current, it ought to be former. You don't call a President Obama president, you call him former or by his number so that folks will know in general terms what office, we, office or, or, or things like that. So I think 
that, that not only should it be a part of the protocol manual, it, there's a way that we have to be able to enforce that. Madam Attorney, is there a way that we can enforce, that we can enforce that? Now you can enforce what items you approve and authorize as a city, of course. We don't get to tell people what they call themselves because that's their right to call themselves. But when it comes to us and what we do here, then certainly, yes, you can prohibit that. So then when we, when we, when we, get, when we begin to talk about what is produced by our city, right. that, 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 that going forward, that our materials has to reflect the current. That's right. Right? Okay, now, if we should, let's say, for example, People can call themselves what they want to call themselves, true? But what if they are misrepresenting themselves at financial gain? It's called we jail. <laughs> <laughs> it's called jail. No, I'm, and but I, I, I don't know that. how I don't know how we can control that. Um, no, I guess what I'm what I'm what I what I what I'm saying is I don't I, I don't know how we can control it. But what I'm saying is that the public is misled as a result yeah. of there not being any type of qualifier that 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 be that's able to state that. And and once again, I'm not I'm, like I said, I'm uncomfortable saying it. You know, I but I do think that be, like be, like the protocol manual for taking pictures, it's not always a comfortable thing, but it's something that we have to be able to deal with it so that it doesn't create misleading efforts on anybody. I you know that, that it's just being fair and equitable mm -hmm. in terms of how this thing here go, goes forward. So, you know, you know, I know, you know, I, I mean. I, 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 can people call themselves the president of the United States because they want to? I don't. I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Leon. You, you will come back. I went. You were done. Go ahead. Can I no, ask a question? Um, yes. Um, because, to be quite honest, as you all know, you amended the protocol manual to require that me and the manager approve your um, that we approve these posters or whatever. And sometimes we have a we're not comfortable. Honestly, we're not. We, we approve it. I'm looking at it for legal. It may be legal. I, but I, I can't mean, hear you, Sonny. I said, some, you all asked us, the last, I think that we amended the protocol manual. You asked that Cameron and I sign off on promotion, promotions for the special events. I'm not talking about the ones that come to council that we know about. I'm talking about those that are unbudgeted. Um, and quite honestly, there have been times when we are uncomfortable. I'm legal, so something can be legal but still make me uncomfortable because I don't know if it's something you all would want to do as a body, although the one person wants to do it. I don't know if some of these sponsors are people you want to have sponsors, but I'm only looking for legal. He's looking as the manager to see if the funds are in the budget for it, and if you have the money, and, he, and if you're doing it on your own, it's coming out of your account, not your account that has to come to council. That's a separate conversation. Um, he's looking at it for that, and if it meets the criteria, he has to sign off on it. So I think what this will do is take us out of that. So I'm happy. But when you do it, I also suggest that you ask for the promotional, active, promotional information to come before you as well. Well, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. I, I don't have a problem with that. I, 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 that's, you know, and I think that is, it's, I don't have a problem with that. My, my issue is making sure that what is being put out with the seal, the, the, the logo of the City of Miami Gardens is in a line with what we stand for here in the City of Miami Gardens. I agree. Uh, and that is why I think it's necessary that if it's not a budgeted event, which means that budget season, if it's not outlined and approved in the budget when we pass the budget in, the, uh, in September for the new fiscal year, it needs to come back before council and it can include that marketing material of what it looks like. And that way we're streamlining, streamlining the brand of what this city looks like and what it entails. Um, and we're making sure that we are essentially moving at, uh, at the sound, at the at one beat. We're moving in sound because there are events that's happening that, that we don't necessarily all agree with and, and, and don't have any, we have no say so in it. So that's all I'm asking for is that it can just come back before council by way of resolution, including how the event is being funded, who's the partners, who, what it entails, the purpose behind it, 
and the, the and then to include the suggestion of the city attorney of including that marketing material with it as an item to the council. Okay. No question. I'm, I'm, but I'm uh, right I have a question as well. Go ahead, Mr. Leon. All right. I get this question to Councilman Stevens. So, if we're using our stipend account and we're coming up with events that um, which are in the realm of using our stipend account, something that we don't have to budget for because it's within that realm. Uh, you're looking for those to come to council also, even though it can be a city event, farm share, things like that that we're paying for out of these accounts. If, you, uh, if, if you're using, if we're using our stipends account to make donations, no. So if we're partnering with an organization to do X, Y, and Z, farm share, uh, supporting a back to school event or something, no. What as I long am, as it has the city, if it has if the city the seal. Of, if it's the city seal, it needs to come back before council. Okay. That's what I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting. I think maybe we should have some more discussion I agree. on this. Uh, maybe a workshop so that we can get a clear understanding on exactly what can and what should and what should I, not come back. Well, I think for me, uh, I don't have a problem with doing a workshop, but I'm very clear what I'm asking. What because I'm asking. Now, what I'm asking for is that any non-budgeted event that was not approved at budget time comes back before council for an approval. In the event you want to utilize the city seal and or the promotion, I mean, to promote it on the city platform. That's it. Okay. I, that's all I'm asking for. But if you all, if it's at the will of the council to come back for a workshop, I'm going to request that a workshop happens rather sooner than later because we're in a time of planning for budget and I don't want to kick the can down the street. I'm very intentional about the brand of the city and there are events, there's initiatives that's happening that we, the council, is not aware of. And the way that we stop that is by bringing it back before the dais as we deliberate the people's business. So that's all I'm asking for. Right. Mr. I have Clerk. a question, Mayor. Hold on, Mr. Clerk had, a, had his hands up for a second. I'll All defer right. to Councilwoman Julian as Council you guys continue that debate. Thank you. Thank you for bringing this item, um, uh, Councilman Stevens. So I know that the city does a plethora of events, and what I, I so my question is, will this now um, hinder or make it impossible to get information out? Because we do tons of events, right, that comes outside of city council members, right? So various departments do events, we have events for the employees, um, cleanup events, and, and so forth. So I just wanna make sure that as we present this item that it does not hinder the rest of the city in doing events because truthfully the um, council were not the only ones putting on events here in the city. So I think we should maybe um, streamline, it, streamline it a little more so that it can be clear as to what you're, what you're um, proposing. Mr. Mayor? Go ahead. I, I don't have a problem with that. I don't pr have a problem, but can we, the only thing that I'm asking my colleagues, if the workshop can be rather sooner than later. Absolutely. That's all I'm asking. All right, so a workshop is on the table now. Can that be at the next, can I make a motion, uh, propose the next council meeting, which is in two weeks that we workshop then? Okay, all right, so, so seeing that we have a motion on the table right now, recommendation would be to, would to withdraw the motion, and then I'll note by consensus of the council to schedule a workshop prior to the next city council meeting. Sure, no, I'll withdraw the motion. All right. All right, so his motion been withdrawn, so all in favor of having the workshop bef before the next council meeting, Signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Any opposition on that? All right. So, Mr. Clerk, put together a workshop for the next council meeting. Okay, but I will stay for my discussion. So I have to use the title. So I have to use the title. Yeah, like calling people out or when they're not, they're not elected, but they think that appears on our, on our stuff. Go ahead, Mr. Clerk. All right, all right, there are no items for quasi judicial zoning here in Jenny's disclosure. We're now on to the report to the city manager, city attorney, city clerk. Uh, 
Mr. Mayor, I, Mr. Manager. Yes, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council Members, I just have a couple of things I want to say. First of all, I want to congratulate the mayor on being elected to the chair or president of the uh, League of Cities. We had a, it was a great event they put on for you, Mayor, so congratulations. Thank you. Uh, obviously, by being the chair and the president of whatever the title is. President. Uh, president. <laughs> we, <laughs> we will, obviously, you will need some assistance with promoting workshops and things of that nature, so whenever that time comes, obviously, we'll be a, we'll be a part of that. Thank you. So we look forward to that. Secondly, I want to con congratulate um, the city clerk who went away last week to his conference and received additional certifications. So I wanted to congratulate him on, on those certifications that he received. And then finally, I, you know, I, I know we just talked about special events and events, and, and I know that's something that we'll continue to talk about to make sure that we do things in the right manner on budget and things of that nature. But I, I do want to say hats off to the vice mayor on your Juneteenth event. Um, it, was a, uh, it was an excellent event. It was an excellent event. The type of events that as your manager I look at and I say, is this the kind of event that's worth it? Is this the kind of event that we get behind? And, and, I've, and, I, and I've been very open and honest with council members regarding events. So I just want to say hats off to you. Um, I look forward to uh, addressing the issues going forward that we may, I don't see that many, but there's a couple of things we need to address. But I just want to say congratulations on a good event. Uh, I, the only thing that throws me off about Juneteenth is that I look for the crowd to be near the stage and I keep forgetting that they, the party's in the car. So, <laughs> but outside of that, congratulations. And that's all I have to say. All right, thank you, Mr. Manager. <laughs> Madam Attorney. I don't have a formal, formal report, but I do want to say kudos to the Vice Mayor as well. She worked very hard behind the scenes in the, in the paid off, and Jamal as well. Um, and Janelle from my office, I have to give her a shout out too, because she handled those contracts. Yes. Also to the Mayor, I look forward to working with you. As I'm the, city, the chairperson of the City Attorney's Committee, so I will be your staff um, in two ways now, as President <laughs> yeah. of the League and as the City Attorney. So looking forward to working with you. Same here, thank you. Mr. Clerk. Um, follow the city manager, city attorney. Um, congratulations, Mayor, on your election as president. And Vice Mayor Wilson, hats off to you, Jamal, and the other legislative analysts that participated in this. I know this was a very big thing. It was definitely, you know, showed how important the event is to the city as, you know, it was raining and then the sun just showed up and allowed us to enjoy our time when the when the manager showed up yes yes so i just wanted to note that for the record and thank you mr manager for recognizing me attending a um clerk's conference and i appreciate the support of the city council and furthering myself as a city clerk thank you thank you mr stevens yes yes thank you mr mayor uh I actually, y'all gonna have to bear with me for a uh -oh. second, um, because the month of July is a quite a busy month for my office. Um, but I congratulate you, Mr. Mayor, on being appoint, uh, was it appointed as president of the League of Cities, and I look forward to serving along you on the board of directors. Um, before I dive into my report, let me acknowledge uh, an additional intern from my office, Mr. Brian Moss. Stand up, Brian. Brian is a business major from FAMU. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Uh, he is also a recipient of our Miami Gardens Dream Scholarship from last year. So in the fall semester, Brian would be starting his sophomore year uh, product of Miami Gardens. So. And, and Brian has ties to Iowa State University. Oh. <laughs> uh, so I uh, wanted to make sure I announced that. Uh, the month of July, on July 15th, uh, Divya Dreams and I have collaborated to uh, present to you all the Dream STEM Festival, uh, Fest that would happen at the Hard Rock Stadium. Uh, come experience science in a way that you've never had, you never have before. Students would be able to engage in over 20 plus STEM activities while having a ton of fun. All grade levels are welcome. It's a totally free event. Uh, to register, uh, visit diviadreams.org. That's D I B I A D R E A N uh, M. Uh, check in starts at 9 30. Again, that is July 15th at the Hard Rock Stadium. 
On Friday, July 21st, I'll be partnering with Encouraging Dream Believe, uh, Dreamers Breaking Barriers to host a citywide car wash. This event would take place at Betty T. Ferguson Recreational Center from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. More information is forthcoming. On Saturday and Sunday, July 22nd and 23rd, I'll be partnering with Mobing Messengers to host our first annual a Moding Messengers Book Fair at Bunch Park. This event would take uh, start at 11 a.m. and end at 5 p.m. On both days, we'll be giving uh, unpublished writers a chance to publish their very own short stories. Uh, to enter the competition, submit your orig uh, original and unpublished short stories to info.staff. Uh, call Tony. <laughs> call Anthony, uh, and he would be able to help you get into the competition. On Sunday, July 30th, I will be partnering with State Representative Felicia Ro uh, Robinson in the Advancing a Sickle Cell Advocacy Project to host the ASAP Day One Year Anniversary Awareness Celebration at Buccaneer Park. This event will begin at 2 p.m. and would include health and wellness vendors and live performances. Uh, I encourage everyone to come out and be a part. Um, and then last but certainly not least, this is in the month of August, just an FYI. On August, 20, uh, August 12th, I'll be partnering with Generational Care for their seventh annual Black and White Gala, honoring extraordinary youth. This extreme event would take place at our Senior Family Center at 6 p.m. Uh, as always, for more information regarding the ongoing programming and questions uh, pertaining uh, to seat six, you can contact my legislative analyst, Mr. Anthony Stewart, at 305-622-8000, extension 2831, or send him an email at a stuart, S-T-U-A-R-T, at fl.gov. That ends my report. <laughs> you, you didn't talk about you didn't talk about us preaching at Pentown. And, oh yes, and by, <laughs> the mayor and I had the honor to attend Pentecostal Tabernacle uh, this past Sunday. Um, you all know the mayor can preach for real, for real. Uh, but we had an, uh, an opportunity to attend uh, Pentecostal Tabernacle this past Sunday to honor Pastor Stewart. On 32 years of service, uh, he retired and is transitioning. Uh, but as you all know, the the Pentab community, a uh, church community, does a lot for our community on the east side of our city. So we wanted to make sure we go there and uh, honor him. Uh, the mayor presented uh, Pastor Stewart with the key to the city um, and acknowledging his service to our city. Councilwoman Negadaro. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No formal report, but stay tuned for upcoming C3 events. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Council, Councilman Leon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, last Thursday, I had the opportunity to represent Miami Gardens in Washington, D.C. at the state capitol uh, with our Congresswoman Wilson. Uh, being able to uh, meet members for the Congressional Black Caucus uh, being able to tell them about our city, uh, and also had the opportunity to swear them in to the 5,000 role model program uh, was a wonderful opportunity. They um, all know so much about Miami Gardens and eager to come down and continue to uh, learn more about Miami Gardens. And also, um, let me say this now, we may not be able to have a flyer, uh, but <laughs> on July 14th, Councilman Stevens and myself will be hosting a and, and, old and school. And he's on the flyer, too. <laughs> we'll be hosting an old school cookout for our seniors, July 14th at our senior center. So uh, we both will be barbecuing, so make sure you guys have, come out and stop by. That's, all, that's the end of my report. No, we barbecuing for real, y'all. No, we they don't have to call a flyer to <laughs> No, we cooking, but we may not have a flyer, so I just <laughs> wanted to let you know now. Councilwoman Julian. Have the fire department on standby. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. I want to start off by welcoming Brian, Brian to uh, Miami Gardens. You know, Councilman Stevens, I applaud your work with the, with the students in your quest to provide scholarships. And I know that, you know, in your report, 
as you provided these scholarships, you know, you, you talked about being questioned about what the return of investment would be. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it right here. A young man who received a scholarship last year, right, went off to FAMU and is now back this summer to intern. Stand up, Brian. Well dressed, very well put together. This is the return of, on investment. They go away, they go get an education, or while still in school, they come back, they pay it for it, they work, they learn. This is what community looks like, so I applaud you, my brother. Thank you so much for what you do. Vice Mayor, Juneteenth, Ooh. amazing. I just want to say that. Thank you. Let me tell you something. I had a really, really good time. I got tons of feedback. I went to church the, the very next day over at Antioch, and when I tell you, everyone that stopped me was talking about Juneteenth. It was safe. It was age-friendly. It was community-oriented, community and kudos to you. Good job to your staff, your team. I got to see firsthand a lot of the sweat equity that you put into putting Juneteenth together. I've been here many of late nights alongside with you, not helping with your event per se, but just engaging in my own work. And sometimes you were here till the wee hours of the night. So kudos to you, Jamal, the staff from the city attorney's office and everybody who was involved in um, putting Juneteenth together. And I'm happy that this is a staple in our city and looking forward to next year and all the other years to come. Amen. Mr. Mayor, yes, I was so happy to celebrate you on this past Saturday. Thank you. Congratulations Thank you. Thank you so much. on becoming Appreciate the president it. of the Miami-Dade County League of Cities. I'm very excited to see one of our own at the helm. And this just speaks to the great things that we are doing here in the great city of Miami Gardens. So congratulations to you. And I can't wait to see all the wonderful things that you will do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So this past Saturday, ladies and gentlemen, I had the pleasure of hosting a home buyers workshop in conjunction with the National Association of Real Estate Brokers, who some of the members are actually here tonight. Um, the family friendly workshop was aimed at providing potential homeowners with key information to jumpstart their home buying journey. We had over 60 attendees and eight home purchasing vendors that were present, including Citibank, Bank of America and City National Bank. Attendees were provided with a wealth of information pertaining to home ownership, credit building, money management, and lending. Thank you to all the sponsors. I wanna thank Randy from my office, all of our community partners, park staff, and PD, the police department that made this event a possibility. Thank you all. Movie night. Who could use a night of family-friendly fun? I know I can. You too, Ms. Sharon? I know you're right. <laughs> On July 7th at 6.30 p.m., I am teaming up with uh, community partners Gabby Cares of South Florida and Optimal Health to host a family movie night at the Senior Family Center. With all the stress that's going on in the world, I invite you to come with your family and friends to enjoy a fun and safe night out. Last but not least, we're, we are hosting our next quarterly cleanup, which will take place on July the 29th. Um, this cleanup is taking place over at the Vista Verde Park beginning at 8 a.m. You know, bringing government to the people is the theme that I am promoting. This will be a time of service and a time to meet those that serve you. Oftentimes, constituents do not know who represent them on various levels of government. I have teamed up with our chairman, Oliver Gilbert III, of the Miami-Dade County Board of Commissioners and Miami-Dade County Judge Marcus Bach Armas. This is an effort to bridge the gap while taking pride in our community and keeping our environment clean. So it is my hope that you will join me in helping to keep Miami Gardens beautiful. And that ends my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Wilson? Oh, uh, Vice Mayor. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Vice Mayor, go on, trailer. Turn okay. your, your, your mic um, on. I, I do want to say this, um, and um, Mayor, and that is that one of the things that I discovered at your um, swearing in is how well liked you are, not only in the city of Miami Gardens, but in this entire county. Thank you. The people not only think of you as a Southern gentleman, but they really love the way you love your family and your community. Thank you. And the way that they treated you from all backgrounds, from all races, from all genders, on that floor, hundreds of people, the respect that they showed you and the honor that they showed you, it elevated our city to a new level. And I just want to be able to say that 
Many people occupy positions, but not everybody's loved in them. Mm. But you are a man that was, their, their reverence for you was really, really apparent. And I am confident that the same way that you are leading us, that you will lead the league of cities in this county. And let me tell you, there's a whole lot of folks and a whole lot of powerful people that showed up to show their support to you. And so whatever it is that you have been doing, it was evident that they approved of it. And so congratulations. And Thank I, you. I just really, really was, was proud of you and, and, and your, your family. You always bring a lot of class uh, to wherever you are. So, so congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, to the Women's Commission, I, I want to say one more time um, that they have done a flagship job. These women, not only after putting on this conference and finding out all of the information, they have worked every single week, sometimes twice a week, to prepare this report to ensure that the voices of the women that gathered on that Saturday, which was pretty close to a couple of hundred, that came out to say, here is what we think is important to women. And this is what we believe we ought to be focused on. And you have clearly articulated that in your report to the, the, the council and the members who of this council that appointed you to do your job. And I'm here to report back to the council people that you picked some stellar women. They have a great deal of class. They're, they're highly educated. They are hard workers. And they're very, very insightful and they are not here to play. So this report is a call to action in many ways of what they, are, what they plan to do ahead for the women of all ages, from the very, very young all the way to the seniors. And I, I am excited to be a part of it, and I'm excited that you guys are a part of it because you have not stopped. And your hard work and your, your, your labor, it will not go unnoticed because the seeds that you are planting will be fruit that people will eat from in years to come. Which leads me into Juneteenth. Um, when I first heard the song, Who's Gonna Tell Them? I heard it at the Women's Commission. And that was our call to say, who's gonna tell the story of Juneteenth and of African Americans in America? Who's going to tell them? I would be remiss if I didn't start out by saying to Jamal, you worked your butt off. And there was nothing that I could ever say anything less. You, the, from the sun up to the right going down to the same, you, you were there between each line of pain, pain and glory. And I'm blessed to have you. I'm blessed that God gave you to me because I could be something else. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, to this uh, team that we call the City of Miami Gardens. Every single one of you that were at the table, from Valentino, and I know his name is Florentino, <laughs> but Valentino, okay. <laughs> from Valentino to public relations, Sam, to Jackie and Antoinette, the dynamic duo, when we were here to 12, 1, and 2 o'clock in the morning, they were here. When people lost in, in their families, in between making arrangements, they were here. To our city manager, who came to peep in and make sure that everything was OK. To the city attorney on vacation calling to make sure that everything is OK. And I, what I'm going to tell you, right, is that a label will make you cry because there are times when you feel all alone and abandoned. But it's those people, when they pick up the phone, you know that you're not by yourself. But when you have a charge to keep, <coughs> sometimes you're gonna walk alone. But you got to continue to what? Walk. Because everyone needs to know the story of Miami Gardens and the history of its people. And so, when we take a look at Juneteenth, everyone that got on that stage was from the 305. And the majority of those were from Miami Gardens. These were the fruit of our city. From the one who sung Lift Every Voice and Sing to the one who sung the Star Spangled Banner, they were our children. 
from our golden poets who told the story of what their mothers and fathers told them. They were Miami Gardens residents. So what you saw was your community. And what you demonstrated is what the people 200 years demonstrated. And that was come together, stay as one, be strong <coughs> and committed, and never give up the fight. Never give it up. And so I'm grateful that this is now called the largest Juneteenth celebration in the state of Florida. Because Miami Gardens does it in a big way every time they do anything. So thank you to this council for your unwavering support. And I thank you to the staff and everyone. And I will thank you more personally in the way <coughs> I want to thank you all. Thank you for those comments. I'm done. OK. <laughs> Councilman Leon. Uh, real quick, uh, council members, uh, Mr. Felton would like us to stay so he can take another picture. And I want to give a shout out to Henrietta Lacey for her first council meeting. Oh. Welcome, Lacey. <laughs> Miss Lacey, she, he put you out there. She got her glasses on right there. Oh, my God. That's it? Okay. First, let me say thank you to each and every one of you for your kind words and reference to the swearing in on this past Saturday. Miami Gardens is at the table now. There's no more bypassing us for anything. We will be a force to reckon with from here until there is no more. And we're planning on being around forever. Miami Gardens is that driving force in Miami-Dade County right now. We've become a city that's globally known. People from all around the world is trying to find out what it is that we do in this city to make it function and make it work the way it does. And when they ask me that question, the first thing I say is our residents that show support, the residents that have a voice in the city. If there's an issue, they bring it to our attention and we work on it. It's our staff. It's this dais. It's everyone working together for that common goal. And the common goal is to be the best city that we possibly can be in this world. Let us continue to tell our story. Because Juneteenth was really a great celebration of our story. And when we talk about the history of the African American, and we talk about the history of a place, we have to talk about Miami Gardens. So we'll continue on that path, we'll continue to work hard, we'll continue to do the things that we need to do. And Sam, you had somebody that you needed to introduce. Oh, Sam. <laughs> <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, Council, um, City Manager, will Laura please stand? Laura, don't, don't just stand. Come out of there and come <laughs> to the front of this podium. You guys, this is Laura Guerriere. She's our new Public Affairs Specialist 1 um, slash events. So she will be here in the public affairs department assisting with events and also our social media needs. Thank okay. you. All right, welcome. That being said, I need a motion to motion. adjourn. Motion, second. Been moved and seconded, show this meeting adjourned.